spent years creating those single strand projects and only admired the stitch beads from afar until I learned the simple ladder stitch. I can't wait to show you how easy it is. It's who I am, a little bit, some sour fair, and some mystery, putting it all together, doing what I do. Hi, I'm Trisha Morris from Club Scrap and welcome back to the show. Let's take a second look at that beautiful ladder stitch bracelet. I love the little tiny seed beads along the outer edge and how when I hold it in my hand it sort of feels like a fabric and the pretty button clasp at the end. And I know it might seem a little bit too complicated if you're a beginner especially, but let me take the mystery out of this bracelet. Now I'm using Club Scrap's ladder bracelet kit from the Beaters Bistro in the Kiwi color. And it comes with a really long piece of beading thread. Now I've shortened the length of the thread just to make it a little bit easier for you to understand what we need to do. Begin by folding the thread exactly in half. And we need to, to attach this loop into the clasp hole right here, which happens to be very, very tiny. So in order to thread this, I'm going to get some assistance from this needle threader. And I'm just gonna put the filament right through that opening. And then I have my looped end of the thread, and I'll bring that right through there and pull a little tail. Then all I need to do is take my clasp and hold it and bring the thread through the eye. And now I have successfully attached my fiber to the clasp. Now you can see a loop here, and I'm going to make a lark's head knot. So I need to bring the ends of my thread through that loop and it's basically like you were attaching a tag to a piece of luggage. Now when I pull this end, the beading thread is now attached to the clasp. Now, at this point, it's really helpful if you have a third hand, but many times those aren't available. So I have a little trick I want to show you that will help hold that clasp in place. I've got a piece of cork right here, and I've taken a T-pin and carefully put it into the eye of this clasp being cautious not to pierce through the thread at all. You don't want to injure your beading thread. And this T-pin will hold it right into the cork so I can work easily. Now, you'll have two working threads and two needles. Now, the needles that I'm using for this project are extremely fine. It's almost like working with a piece of hair. But the thread is fine also, and it needs to be threaded through the eye of this needle. It's very, very small. There are many different needles on the market designed for this. Some of them have really wide eyes that open and are a little bit easier for you to thread. Okay, now I need to add some beads to my working threads. I'm gonna start with the one on my right or your left. And I've got some small seed beads here and they can be challenging to get onto the needle. So if you just put them in a tray and pick them up with the needle rather than with your hand, it will be a lot easier to get those beads onto the needle. So I am threading a total of five of these seed beads right onto the needle. That's four. Okay. Now I'll bring those beads down to the clasp, and then I'm going to add three of these kiwi colored square beads and bring those to the clasp. Okay, I can set, set my working needle down here and pick up the other one. And for my starter here, I will go back to the tray and I'll get five more of those tiny little seed beads. Okay, now bring those over to the clasp. Now the next thing I need to do is create the first rung of my ladder, and this is the fun part. We're gonna take that same needle you were just holding where you've attached those five seed beads and bring that needle through the three square beads in the opposite direction. So now I have two threads going through those beads in two different directions. When I pull these together, I now have the first rung of my ladder. My working threads have switched sides now, so I take the one on my right or on your left, and I'm going to pick up three more of the small seed beads. Now remember the first time I picked up five, and that was just the starter pattern. That's not the pattern that will carry through, so just three small seed beads. Then to the needle, I will also add three large square beads. Now bring all of those beads down to the clasp, and as you're working, just keep pulling the slack out of the thread so you can see that what you're doing is correct and you don't lose track of where you are. I'm going to take this needle and put it back into the cork and pick up the other working thread. I'm not going to add any square beads again, just three small seed beads. Okay, bring those down to the clasp again. All right, with the same working thread, now I'm going to double back through those three square beads 
Just not going through any seed beads though. Pull the thread through, remove the slack, and ta-da, the second rung is complete. Now a seven and a half inch bracelet will require about 24 rungs, but you can just put it on your hand and test it a little bit or measure the length of the bracelet you want. Stop a half inch short of seven and a half inches or whatever desired length you need so that you can have room to add the clasp, which is the next thing I need to show you. Okay, so now what I've done to finish things off, you can see all these ladders are in a row. I've checked the length, it's good for me. And then I've added, once again, five seed beads, just like you did when you started the bracelet. That will give it symmetry. And then I need to attach my button clasp. Sometimes the starts and the endings of making a bracelet are probably the more challenging things. What I'm going to do is take my working thread and bring it through the eye on the clasp, and then just pull it through. And then I'm going to go through it one more time. So I have another loop. Now I've pulled it through once and I need to repeat that to make sure that this is really going to be a sturdy clasp. We don't want all this hard work falling around on the floor. Well now that I have two loops around this clasp, I need to double back a little bit into these seed beads. And as I'm doing this, I don't want you to worry about the slack that is in the bracelet. We'll take care of that when we fix up the other side. Okay, so now when that is pulled through, I'm gonna set down that working thread, pick up the other one, and repeat the process by entering the eye of the clasp with the other needle, pulling it through to make a loop. And this is when you need to start picking up that slack out of the bracelet so that it looks really finished. And then I'm gonna go through that eye one more time. It's all about strength here. We only wanna do this once. Okay, just like we did on the other side, we're gonna take that needle and go back down through those five tiny little seed beads. Once again, remove any slack. And then what you can do is continue keeping your needles on the thread and start with this other working needle again and go through the beads to the other side. And then with the other one, go back through the other way and continue to work your way back. Tie the ends into a knot, maybe between two of those little square beads, and then your bracelet will be nice and sturdy and strong, and then one, you'll be proud to say, I made it myself. Now, I didn't think it would be appropriate to leave you just with a bracelet. Let's take a look at how you can make a really quick pair of dangle earrings to match with the leftover supplies from your kit. Watch it fall around me and shades plum and bird of green. We're gonna start with a couple of head pins. Half a dozen will do. A head pin is basically a piece of wire with a stopper at the end of it. Just like when you were beading earlier, you can take the head pin and just thread your beads as you would before onto the needle. But this time, make a little pattern of your choice. What I've done is I've made graduated lengths here by adding an extra square bead pattern to each one. To make a hanging loop for these, just pick one up, and I'm taking my thumb and putting it at the top of the bead to kind of hold it in place. And then I'm gonna bend it back at about 90 degrees. Then I'm going to take my needle nose pliers and grip it at the end and start making a coil. Now notice the pliers has a graduated size, so I'm gonna keep my pliers in the middle so I have a little bit of a larger dangling hole. And then just work your way around in a circle and you'll have a really nice dangling loop for your head pin. Now we're gonna pick up a jump ring with a chain nose pliers and grip it so that the split portion of the ring is right at the top, and then use the other pliers to separate. Now be sure to pull forward and back. If you pull apart, that will break the circle, and then it'll be very difficult to put it back together. Then just randomly thread the three dangles onto the jump ring. Don't forget to put your ear wire on there. And reclose the jump ring just as you did when you opened it. And lickety split, you've got yourself a pair of earrings. Do that one more time so you can have one in the other ear. And let's take a look at a few of the other great bracelets we made with that same simple ladder stitch. Remember, you don't have to stick with, with the colors that I showed you today. You can brighten things up and have something nice for the summer season. And you can also go with iridescent, maybe some metallics or silvers and golds. Change the color of the button clasp that you choose to use. Maybe something you wanna wear with denim or more casual look. And then once you've mastered these different color variations using the simple stitch, there is a long way you can go to more advanced techniques and different things you can try. 
Well, along with me, I hope you've discovered how easy stitched beading can be. Put a new rung in your ladder and give it a try. To create this project yourself, download this week's design guide. You'll get step-by-step -step instructions along with special make-it-your-own bonus tips and ideas.